Hello, it's Nikki. Welcome back. Or if you're just seeing one of these videos for the first time, I'm so pleased that you're here. Thank you so much. And if you've got questions, if you've got comments, you can always message me and I'll do my best to answer it in the best way possible. Or I can make a video about it and you can do this completely anonymously. Uh, but today I want to talk about commitment and not commitment to anybody else, just yourself. And I am recording this on the 4th of January, which um, you would think is very early in January to be feeling like this. But I am here to say that who we are and our thoughts and our feelings and our habits and the way that we move through the world, it's very ingrained in our psyche and our programming of our brain and when people say things like oh I just decided and then kind of go forward and conquer from there I think there's much more to the story and so firstly if you're watching this whether you're watching it on the 4th of January or beyond and you're like mm, yeah I I've run out of motivation a little bit today or I'm doubting myself or you're just basically having that very human experience. Welcome. You are in safe hands, in a safe place. Um, and I want to give you some tools that you can play with. And one of the things that I need when I'm in that lack of motivation, when I feel stuck, I need something to essentially like unclog the pipes a little bit so things get going and moving once again and so these little exercises today um, will hopefully be helpful for you to do just that so I'm back I've been banging on about it for ages but I've been running every single day um, since the middle of November so today was day 47 and I now feel like I've gone beyond uh, and that's not to say like this is the permanent place from now on um, because, you know, it's a journey. Uh, but where I am up to right now, I've got to a place where my body expects it, where my routine is, like my children see me like, oh, that's just something mummy does. It's like become part of my identity. But that first couple of weeks, it felt... It felt like that moment, you know, when toddlers go from like moving and cruising along the end of the sofa and then they begin to like dangle to the side and you're thinking, are they going to walk? What's going to happen? And they've they've sort of tentatively still got one hand on the sofa. That is how I was with this habit in the first couple of weeks. I was really keen. There was a willingness there. But I hadn't quite embedded it in my day-to-day -day life, in who I was. And on day three or four, I almost gave up because Matt suddenly got some last-minute work. And then when I thought I was... I mean, it was a really simple thing. And this is why I'm saying it. It's not going to be a complicated thing often um, that holds you back or some big thing. It's going to be your mind playing tricks on you. So this is what my mind did. I thought I was going to run in the morning and then Matt had to go to work early and immediately I said to myself, right, well, that's it then. That's it. I'm not going to get to run today. And I had to stop and I was like, no, you just need to move the time. The, the way that I've set up this habit is to be workable, to be doable. And I knew that I was going to take the children to school. So they were like, so I had to sort of say to myself, we just need to run for 15 minutes after you've dropped them off, before you start your day, just do that. And it was so simple, but it was a recognition of how cheeky your mindset can be sometimes. It wants to hold you back, it wants to keep you safe, it wants to be familiar. And so I'm really glad I got stuck in with that. Um, so here are some things that can help you. Old stories and identity can really keep us safe, but they can keep us small. And during 2023 of my ultimate life reset that I'm kind of calling it now, I realized that lots of pieces and parts of my identity or stories that I had about myself, lots of them 
I didn't truly believe or I wouldn't put onto something else. So I realized that I'd kind of gathered up like bits of dust along the way of what society said or what an old teacher said to me or something I picked up or something that I subconsciously read on the internet and thought, oh, right, I better watch out for that. And slowly but surely, I I had that kind of de-bobbler going around going, okay, that doesn't belong to me. How long has that been there? Right, okay, so what does this mean? And this thing, in terms of running, let's use that as an example. If I had run round the block as a teenager, which I actually did, or I'd go for walks and then, you know, finally when it was a quiet street, I'd begin to run... That would be prime uh, a prime situation for people taking the mick out of you, holding you back like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're trying to get fit, are you? Or just that fear that somebody would like wind down their window and shout at you in the middle of the street. And this is not me being dramatic. This These things happen all of the time. And yet, when I think about who I want to be in the world, I want to be somebody who lives for a long time And I want to be able to exercise freely. I want to teach my children the importance of moving your body and doing it in a way that feels good. And I want to feel vibrant and I want my children to feel vibrant. You know, that sense that you can move and you can have energy and all of these things. And so when I have these wobbles, I go back in and I check out what those old stories are. And if there are things in there that are sort of creeping forward, I really examine them. Like, who doesn't want me to do this? Who's going to be cross if I continue doing this? And actually, this is where I get my Scorpio fire back of like, yeah, okay, they are, okay, somebody said I couldn't, right, I'll show them. And actually, to lead your life with that kind of intention is probably not the one but sometimes when you need to get out of bed and get your trainers on on a cold morning it served me well secondly sometimes you need a bigger why I think our brains again want to keep us small and they'll say things like well if I can just do it this week then you know I'll have six months off because I deserve it and I mean I've gone through all of these things And what I've actually found is the bigger why for my life, for my business, for my role as a a mother, as a partner, as a daughter, as a somebody who does a lot of stuff at school. I mean, I don't do as much as everybody, but, you know, I contribute in that way. And when I'm thinking about who I want to be in the world, that person is somebody who is sharp and positive and brings value and is good to be around. And I now know that I am a 50% better human being if I move my body. It really kickstarts me. It makes me feel vibrant again. So that bigger why of really stretching it out is going to be really, really valuable for you. Um, I'm going to go into part two in just a second because I think there's more to go into this. So I don't want to rush the other things, but I'm really curious to know what habits you set for the year ahead and what is coming up for you already? What are those sort of creepy crawly stories that are pulling you back going, no, no, come over. Oh, you don't need to do that. And sometimes those voices or those excuses or those old familiar things, sometimes they're dressed up in different outfits. Sometimes they're really cozy and comforting and smiley and put their arm around you. And I love that energy for me and for my clients, but it doesn't it it isn't serving my best version full time. And actually, when I've been thinking about people I want to work with, you know, me as the client, I want somebody who will say, um, but Nikki, you said you wanted to do that. 
why why are you what what's happened what's gone on here i want somebody to challenge me i don't want that dinner lady energy all the time who's going to go come on let's go and sit on the bench is it a bit difficult today what i want to do will have difficult elements and the quicker that i get my head around that i've worked out it's going to be the better for everybody so I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you're working on, if I can help in any way. If you want to work with me for a month and get this thing moving and shaking and in your body. As I say, I'm 47 days in and I don't want to be smug to say I've cracked it. I absolutely haven't in terms of a life, but I've opened the next levels. And so even if you're thinking, I, I don't know if I could do that every single day, lean on me and my belief in you because I know that it's possible and I know there are things that can be put in place to really support your success. So come back for part two, uh, go to my website, you can go to my work with me page or my shop and do something for you today. Send me a message, let me know and I'll see you in part two. Bye.